So arranging and organizing objects in 3D space is fantastic and it's an absolutely essential part of all 3D work, but where the real magic happens, at least in the part that we're going to be covering today, is down in the SOPS level. So let's grab our test geometry pig head and get in there um, by double clicking um, and we're down now inside of this SOPS context um, that we were talking about before. Note how the pig head now has grade lines on it and that the uh, rubber toy is semi-transparent. This is due to the fact these other visualization options that we have while we're down here. So inside the uh, scene view over here, we've got a couple options, these two menus. One of them is this uh, wireframe menu. I, I kind of, it's just sort of like the geometry display menu, but I can switch between smooth wire shaded, which is what we're on right now, to smooth shaded. And you can see the wireframe on the pig head goes away. Um, we could also switch to wireframe. There's just a bunch of different view options that we have down here for uh, visualizing our geometry. I'm going to just switch back to smooth wire shaded so that we can kind of see that wireframe outline right now. And then the other one that's really important, you can see we're in this context where we're dealing with the pig head, but we can still see the rubber toy. And that's due to this option right here. You can see we've got three options in this little menu. There's the ghost other objects, which is what we're currently on. Hide other objects or show all objects. And this can be really handy when you're trying to work on some geometry of your scene, but you need to see kind of how it relates to some other geometry in your scene. You can change this. So if you don't want to see any other objects, you can say hide other objects and then you can kind of focus on this SOP context that you're in right now. But if you need to reference the other objects that are in your scene, you can say show all objects, which will bring in the fully shaded version of your other geometry. Or you can say ghost other objects, which will kind of allow you to, you know, see your other objects in your scene, but they're just semi-transparent. So you can kind of see, I can kind of look behind them. So um, that's just sort of what those options do. Right now, I'm just going to switch it back to hide other objects, and we'll just focus on what we can do inside of this network without being distracted by what's going on uh, out here on the object level, like this. Let's get back in here to our uh, test geometry, and uh, yeah. So this SOP level operates in a little bit of a different way than the object level, and I kind of want to throw down some additional geometry in this level to kind of show what the differences are. So I'm going to hit the uh, tab key over here in my network view and, and start to type in sphere. So we're going to throw it on a sphere and hit enter twice. And that creates a sphere. You can kind of see a hint of it at the uh, middle of our screen here. I'm just going to make sure I got my manipulator selected. And I'm just going to drag that out off to the side. You can see that it's sort of in this like highlighted wireframe mode. It didn't actually kind of take over. It didn't add to our view. We don't see it in addition to our pig head the way we did on the object level. And that's because we're only displaying our pig head right now. So you can see that we've got a visibility flag here and that will allow us to determine which geometry we're looking at. So if I click on this visibility flag, I'm not actually flagging the pig head on and off the way I was at the object level. I can actually switch over to looking at the sphere. If I uh, select the sphere and select this eye icon, and you can see that my display flag is now set to the sphere instead of the pig head. So I can kind of switch back and forth between those two right now. Um, you can see though that as I switch back and forth, the sphere has a sort of wireframe outline left behind. And that's because the sphere node is selected. So if I actually switch to the sphere node and then select the jam, the pig head node, you can actually see a wireframe of that left behind, which uh, can be kind of helpful in some instances. Now to see what these other flags do, I think it's going to be more beneficial if we start actually building something out here. So let's start actually making our geometry do something. You know, what we did here was we moved our sphere sort of on the sphere generator by changing its center parameter right here. I want to actually change the position of the sphere a different way. So I'm going to hold down control and middle mouse click on the center parameter to reset this. And then we're going to use a transform node instead. So over here, I'm going to hit the tab key and type transform. And then hit enter and just click in the network view so I can get my transform node here. And you can see that it's giving me an error and saying that it requires some transform geometry, some geometry to transform basically. So we can fix that by actually wiring our sphere into this transform node. And you can see the transform node is happy. And then if we switch our display flag over to the transform node, you can see here that we've got this manipulator here and we've got a different set of parameters where we can actually do a translation and rotation scale of our objects down here in the SOP level. So I can grab this manipulator and move it off to the side and um, see it's moved into its new position here. 
So now if I'm moving around this transform node and I want to see what I'm doing with respect to this geometry, this pig head geometry, I can't really see that right now because I have my display flag and my transform selected. But I can use this other flag, the template flag, to see what where the pig head is and have that kind of stay on screen as a reference. So you can now see that I can have my transform displayed and selected and be moving this around and the templated pig head will sort of persist on screen with this pink little template flag in the lower right hand corner here. So that's sort of what that uh, template flag does. The next one is I'm just going to turn that template flag off and go back to the transform and maybe I'll set the template flag on the sphere. So we can see that the sphere was here and then we moved it off to the right. Cool. And then the uh, next thing we can check out is what this bypass flag does. This bypass flag will actually just disable whatever this node is doing. So if I click it, you can see that the sphere pops back to its original position because it's no longer being affected by this transform. We turn it back on and the sphere pops off to the right. The other one is this freeze flag and this will actually just freeze the geometry in your scene. And so um, if you make any adjustments, like for example, if I disconnect this node, I hold down the Y key and slice through this wire, you can see that we still have a transformed sphere here because we've frozen that geometry. If I unfreeze the geometry, it's going to ask me um, if I want to discard lock changes, I'll say okay, and then this node will get upset at me because it has nothing to transform uh, because it's looking for incoming geometry. Before when it was locked, it was just displaying whatever geometry it represented in its lock state, but since we unlocked it, that all disappears. Just wire this back in and we're back where we were. The other flag here, it kind of appears in this radial menu, is this I, and this actually gives you a bunch of info. You can see here that this gives us uh, the number of points and primitives and vertices, uh, polygons, all that sort of stuff, just information about our geometry. Now, if we want to combine our geometry and show it together, we can throw it on a merge. So I'm going to throw it on a tab, hit tab and type merge, and then hit enter and then click in here. And then just, we're going to wire in the output of the test geometry uh, pig head into this merge. You can see this, this input is a lot larger. That indicates we can input as many things into this as that we want. So we can actually grab the output of the transform and wire that in as well and set our display flag to the merge. And let's just turn off the template flag up there. And you can see that we've got both of our objects coming in on our merge um, and we can see them both in our scene together. So they've effectively been combined at the SOP level um, into one piece of geometry. Before we move on to more intricate examples, let's just look at what other kinds of things we can do down here at the SOP level. Say I want to take this sphere and cut a hole out of the uh, pig head uh, using a boolean operation. We can throw down a boolean uh, right here as well. So let's uh, hit the tab key and type in boolean and then hit enter and click in the screen and let's just wire the pig head into the left input of the boolean and the transform into the right uh, input of the boolean. And then we'll just set our display flag to this boolean. You can see that when we select the boolean, we kind of get this outline, but we don't see really anything happening. And that's because there's no intersection happening between these two objects. But now if I select my transform and make sure I have my manipulator selected and I drag the sphere over, you can see that I'm able to actually cut into the uh, pig head using that sphere. So that's kind of what the uh, boolean is doing for us. Uh, which is kind of cool. Now, if we wanted to do this a bunch of times, we could uh, do something similar, like maybe take this sphere and create another transform. So I'm going to type transform and we're going to make a new transform and move the sphere, let's say down um, sort of kind of near the front of its mouth or something like that. And say we'll, we'll make another cut right here. So instead of actually cutting with uh, just this sphere up here, we're going to use this other one down here. And, you know, that's going to work. We can actually combine both of those two transforms in a merge and have both of them affect the uh, Boolean instead. So you can see now that we're um, using both of those transforms to cut into our pig head geometry. Suppose I wanted to actually make uh, this happen like a hundred times though, randomly across the pig head. That would be kind of hard to do to create a hundred transforms off to the side and, you know, make it, <laughs> make, make, make that happen uh, by hand each time. So we can do something called a scatter and a copy to points. So let's check out how we can do that. I'm going to just um, take this merge and this transform that we have over here. I'm just going to delete them. So let's delete those. 
And here we've got this one transform. And what I want to do is just sort of template the pig head and make these spheres a, a little bit smaller. So I'm going to just middle mouse and drag on the uniform scale until we get down to a, about a size of point, point 0.2 looks good. We'll just set that to point 0.2 on the uniform scale. And then what I want to do is maybe copy this randomly to 100 different points across the pig head. So what I can do here is I'm just going to delete this merge. I'm going to do a scatter. So this node, I hit tab and type scatter. And what scatter is going to do, if I wire the uh, test geometry into the scatter and set my display flag on the scatter, you can see that I've got a bunch of dots that have appeared all over the shape of my pig head. Now that is created by default a thousand dots. I'm just going to reduce this down to a hundred dots. So I'm going to select this force total count value and set it to a hundred. And then I'm going to use a copy to points. So I'm going to hit tab and type copy to points. And now what we've got here on our copy to points is in the left input, it's expecting geometry that we want to copy. And then in the right input, it's selecting target points that we want to copy that geometry onto. So the target points are going to be our scatter right here, our scatter points. So I'm just going to wire that into the right input. And then I'm just going to grab this sphere that we manipulated right here. And I'm going to wire that into the left input. And if I show my copy to points, you can see I've got all of my spheres here that are copied, but they're slightly off to the side. And the reason for that is because they are, they've been translated by this transform away from their origin axis. So the original sphere is located at the origin and this transform has moved it off to the side. So I'm just going to reset the translate on this transform by hitting, holding down the control um, key and uh, middle clicking on translate. And you can see that that zeroes out this translate parameter and puts all those spheres back on the surface of the pig head. So now instead of wiring in just the single sphere into the Boolean, I can wire in the result of this copy to points into the Boolean. So let's just take that and put that in the right hand side. It's going to reorganize these nodes a little bit. Just dragging this over here, let's bring this off to the side and bring my Boolean off to the side like so. And let's show the Boolean now. You can kind of see that we've punched a bunch of holes in our pig head. I'm going to just turn off this display flag, make it a little bit easier to see. And you can see it kind of messed up the texture, but um, aside from that, if I just turn off the texture view, you can kind of see that it's kind of created these all these little holes in our pig head geometry, which is kind of fun. Now let's say, what if we wanted to bring in our rubber toy that we have over here and do the same thing to this one instead? Well, we've got our rubber toy geometry right here in its own SOP network. And we've got our setup that we've done for kind of creating these little holes in this network over here. So we can either copy these nodes and paste them into the other network, or we can actually merge in the geometry from the uh, rubber toy network and bring it into the pig head network and work on that instead. So the way I like to do this is we can actually just hop inside the pig head object and create an object merge in here and the object merge will allow us to, allows us to bring other geometry from elsewhere in our scene down into the sob level so that we can work on it so i'm going to hit the tab key and type in object merge and you can see that after just the first couple of letters you can see object merge is the first option from my list up here i'm just going to select that and click in my network and if i set the display flag here you can see that um, nothing appears because there's nothing um, that is being merged in yet. But if I select this little icon right here, it allows us to select a node. We select that and you can see that we've got kind of like a little object manager list thingy right here. And we can select the rubber toy object right here. Actually, I'm going to spin it open and select the rubber toy SOP right there and hit accept. And you can see that now we've got a rubber toy in our network. And if we look and we say ghost other objects, you can see the rubber toy that we brought in was actually located over here. But what we brought in was located at the origin. And that's because it's ignoring the transform on this object and just bringing it into this object. Um, but if you wanted to actually grab the transform, transform it into this object, we could say it transform into this object and it will pop the, uh, the test geometry into its world space location based off of where it is on the object level. So going back into the pig head now, we can actually just wire this in as well. So if I wanted to actually um, wire this, I could like move this network, this node over here and, and this node over here. 
and then go select the display flag at the bottom and you can see that it's run the same set of I'm just hiding other objects here you can see it's run the same set of operations over my test geometry like so um, an easy way if we wanted to switch between these two objects was to throw it on a switch node so instead of wiring see how this output is flowing into multiple things instead of moving two um, of these you know, wirings together at once, we can actually um, create a knot and then a switch. So I'm gonna create a knot by holding on the Alt key and clicking on this wire. You can see we get this little kind of, this dot right here. If I'm holding Alt and dragging this dot around and I drag it over this uh, connection, you can see that it actually sort of combines it into this one knot. And now up here, what I can do is throw it on a switch like this and wire this output of the switch into the knot and then the test geometry can go into the switch and so can the object merge go into the switch and now when I grab my switch I can switch between input 0 and input 1 using the slider and it'll pop back and forth between those two inputs and you can see kind of the power of uh, the proceduralism of this little network that we set up to create this effect and we can apply it to multiple different objects and that's really what the beauty of Houdini is is it's a lot of very simple tiny little steps that you take to you know generate some more complex behavior last thing I like to do to kind of clean up my network is throw it on a null at the end and the null node is basically it its only purpose is to just sort of serve as a label it doesn't do anything to your geometry or anything but it makes an easy reference point to grasp later on so usually my practice is to throw it on a null and turn on caps lock and type in something descriptive like out uh, holy geometry something descriptive so I can see it in you know other uh, other contexts of Houdini and then what I'll do is uh, file and save if you haven't saved already you could save as and then you know find a location on your uh, computer and save that file like so I think that this was actually the stops recording I'm just gonna put it in here and say accept and I'll overwrite that file and then I'm going to choose a new file for the next section. So file new. You can see you've got a nice blank scene here. So that's sort of an intro into how we can use uh, SOPs in the more basic, in the most basic level, and just sort of how the network editor works in the SOP level. And next we'll get into a little bit more uh, complex behavior that we can achieve using SOPs.